Hey, Hitesh here. Now this video is little different. Today I will not be saying hey that this is the course that you can learn from and this is not a, a video about hey this is how the Android development is being done or this is how you can make a to-do app in iOS. This is a little different video but still this video is related to tech. By the end of the day this is a tech channel and we have to discuss the technology. But I want to discuss something more important than what we usually do on this channel. Now let me start with a simple incident. Let's just say there is a boy and he wants to become a cricketer. And by the way, cricket is a big game in India. Let's just say he wants to become one. And what he does, he took out a stick from a tree, a rounded stick, and he tries to do a straight drive throughout a year and wants to master that. Will he able to do so? Probably, probably. Will he able to do it professionally? Probably, if he is one in a billion. B with a billion. Probably he can do that. Let's just say that you want to become a cricketer. Now there are a couple of options. You can just do whatever the resource you have and can sit back and complain, hey, I'm doing my best with whatever the resource I have. You can sit back and complain or you can do something about it. Learning anything is an investment. You want to become a cricketer, you want to become a runner, you want to become a programmer, everything is an investment. Now imagine that another, another scenario where a student wants to become a cricketer and he just works a little harder and buys a bat and then he practices the same stroke for throughout the year. Obviously he's going to be much more professional than the guy who is doing whatever he can do with the resource. Learning anything is an investment. You want to become a learner, you have to invest in your nutrition which is very important. You have to invest in good shoes, you have to invest in proper guidance, proper training. Learning is an investment. If you want to become a programmer and you are saying, hey, I'm learning programming on my mobile phone. I just write the codes in there and run my Android app or JavaScript code online there with this small device just like there. Can you become a professional programmer with that? Probably. Probably you can if you are one in a billion. Billion with a B. Probably you can. But you can do something more about it and can work a little hard, can buy the proper devices, proper gadgets that you require, proper hardware, and then can practice and do something about it. Now this reminds me of a few incidents that I did in my college and I, I rarely share these kinds of things, but this is important here. I need to share this. Now, if some of you are connected with me with my early days, you know that I was broke at one time, uh, broke enough that I couldn't afford to buy a laptop. My dad worked really, really hard for months to buy me my first laptop because he wanted, he saw my interest in programming and everything and he wanted to give me the best. So whatever he could have done in the months, working late nights, working extra hours, he bought me a laptop. I got the laptop and eventually I realized that I need to upgrade some hardware in this laptop. I couldn't ask my dad because he has done already a pretty good job of buying a laptop. Uh, I cannot ask him now. Now there, I had two options. I could have sit back and complain about it. Or I could do something. I can move up my ass and do something about it. I chose to do something. I went out in the market and I asked for a job. A job where I can do anything for the shop guys. And I, eventually I found out a job where I had to sit down and install Windows laptop, uh, Windows on the laptops and some software like that. I worked really hard at that store for seven days and when I got enough money to buy my hardwares, I said, now I got it. Now I can work that. Now, on top of that, when I was working at that shop and I was leaving off, that shopkeeper guy said, hey, I'll pay you three times of the money uh, that I'm paying you right now and just sit with me and for, on, on monthly basis and I'll pay you three times. Then I asked myself, yeah, that's a good offer. I can buy more hardwares, good mobile phones if I'll work for this guy. But on the second thought I realized, is this why I started to working for him? Is this my end goal? I said, no, I have to go beyond this. So I said, no, thank you so much for the offer, but I would like to have this money, this hardware, and that's it. That's what I wanted to do. Now you always have two options in life. Sit back and complain about it sit back and complain, hey, my college is not providing good ed education for me, there is nothing technical in my college there, or I'm not having a good educational center to learn programming, or I'm not having a good stadium to, do, to become a runner there. You always have an option to sit back and complain. 
And this reminds me of my theory of zeros and ones. There are two kinds of people. We are programmers. We just know two things, zeros and ones. Zeros who just sit back and complain and keep on, keep on, keep on complaining. Or the people who just move their and try to solve that problem. Try to become the ones. Try to solve that problem. Enough of complaining. You can do jobs out there, small jobs to become, uh, to take the amount of money that you really require and can fulfill your dream jobs. It reminds me of a few good incidents as well. I, I, I heard about the people who were coming to the Bombay for a good talks, the good technical people. I wanted to attend their talk, but again, I, I didn't have the enough money uh, to go there. So what I did, I registered at the event and I say, I'll show up, I'll show up somehow. I again looked up for the job and find out that a few blocks away the physics teacher is gone and now the institute guy is looking for a physics teacher. And that was a perfect opportunity for me. I worked extra hours and I, I taught their physics in my early days of the college and eventually, eventually I got enough money to travel to Mumbai. I did some calls to the friends and I asked them, hey, can I stay there uh, at Mumbai? Because obviously I didn't have money uh, to, to stay at good hotels and like that. And eventually friend helped me a lot. And I spent really good time with those friends. I stayed at the hostels of IIT Bombay and uh, I made a really good friends in IITB and stayed at their PGs and hostels and all of that. Had a good fun time. But my motive was really simple. I wanted to attend the attend the talk of those big guys, big people who have done something great in technology. And after that, I became unstoppable. Every workshop, every event, every seminar, whether it's happening in my college, nearby college, or college in nearby state, I would go there, I would learn technology no matter what it takes. No matter what it takes. Is it a short attendance in my college or whatever happens, I'll take care of that later on. So I could have just sit back and complain that, hey, my college doesn't teach that or there is no good institute in my area or I can do something about it. Now, I'm not saying buy my courses or buy that person courses or buy this book only. All I'm saying is make investment, make investment in seminars, make investment in workshops, make investment in courses, books, everything, whatever you can do to learn, because this is the most perfect time for you to learn. Once you'll spend amount of time, it will become uh, much more harder for you to learn. Once you'll spend, let's just say, five years or 10 years without learning anything, it will become much more harder for you to learn. So all I'm saying is you can sit back and complain or you can start working on it. Let me know what kind of people you are. Are you going to just sit back or you're going to do something about it?